You guys ask me about lighting all the time. I had a couple of questions yesterday, so we're going to start this video by addressing the lighting in the room and what I do um, to make sure that not only the videos are well lit, but any, any of the baits that I shoot are well lit. Um, one of the things that I'll probably cut to a couple of times is within the video is making sure I have a decent area that's kept clean. Um, that's a big thing is keeping your area clean and also you don't want to overcrowd it with stuff um, Obviously having said that I do have artwork all over my desk my finishing desk, but that's just me That's my style you guys are used to seeing it and um, It also helps identify that I'm different than other folks So it's just something that uniquely identifies to me and my style and how I paint and how I showcase stuff on video and also through photography. You don't have to have an expensive camera. I have a good camera. I have a Nikon. Um, I've got a Sony. I've got a few different tools for the trade. But most of the time, especially when I'm coming to you guys like live, I use my phone just as much as I use a GoPro or the Nikon or the Sony or any of that stuff. So today I'm filming on the phone. And the cool thing about most smartphones today is that they shoot in 4K. You just have to kind of play around with them a little bit until you are pretty familiar with what it can do and what it can't do. And then um, the other thing that I do in post-production, not necessarily mess with the color. Um, unless the color is absolutely horrible, which I don't have any issues with, but um, you can do a little little bit of tweaking in post-production. You can kind of vignette some stuff, and I have a subscription to the Creative Cloud, which I've had for about a year now. I also use Cyberlink, but that's just basic, basic stuff. There's some stuff on the phones that you guys can get. Snapseed is out there. Um, Photo Director is out there, which is not the same as Photoshop or Lightroom. Those are Adobe products, but there's a few of those out there. Snapseed is like that too. So there are several tools to the trade that will help you enhance your photos, but you have to start with decent product and you also have to start with just clean backgrounds is fine too. Like a black backdrop is probably the best because that's a light absorber versus something that's going to reflect light unless you have low lighting in the room so there's it sounds to me like after spending a couple of minutes on this subject with you guys maybe i should shoot a video on it this little guy is a gold vein and this gold vein is a 2.5 it's a standard rattle pressing you guys can hear that yeah i had to pull that off i have a couple of different things that I record with so and it's a gold vein because it's gold veins there you go simple um, I'm pretty stress-free when it comes to naming what I've got it is an under layer of createx pearlized copper shot with a mesh made into a craw given a little bit of white details if you're wondering what I'm listening to in the background although I don't think you guys can hear it if you can hear it it's actually a pretty cool, chill radio station that's online. It's called chillsky.com. So we've talked about lighting and a video that I should do in March for you guys. We've talked about um, just a little bit about the radio station I was listening to. I went ahead and killed that so we're, we don't have any kind of noises that don't make sense for the video. But i um, already shown you this, this next little guy. So I'm getting ready to test this. I'm... I'm Ozark, so I live around all of the lakes that make sense for clear water and spro products and wiggle warts and rock crawlers and all that kind of stuff. Um, that said, there is a no-name, really good ABS plastic. It's put together very well. Obviously, it looks the part except for it's got eye sockets in it. And I am getting ready to test it. I've painted this one up. I've got a few of them. I've got regular wiggle warts too, and I've got the you know the storms and rapalas, all that good stuff. Um, but just wanting to try something a little bit different because hey, not everybody, especially the custom painters out there, not everybody likes to hand paint eyes on everything. It's not too hard, but some people don't just don't like to do it. Some people may may rather have something like this so these are those pearl eyes that i got and you know what i have i have yet to find them since that one time and i'm like oh they should be back hopefully they'll be back i, ha I can't find them um and i keep looking but i'm down to just a few 
and they're beautiful eyes. I absolutely love them, and I found them one time on Amazon, and no more since that. But just a, a regular, this is that demon trans, everybody's been talking about demon colors lately, but this is it. It's just a plum into a sunset uh, red, into uh, a tangerine kind of uh, pineapple tangerine pearl, a little bit of black magenta, and that's pretty much the color. You guys know what this is. It's that natural crappie. I did this a little bit dark, put a little bit of sepia down the sides on this one. Like how that came out. Like the colors. But you guys, I've, I've done this one to death. You guys keep ordering them now, so thank you. Um, that wintergreen sun, you guys have seen this a lot lately. I've got two anarchy stencils going on these versions of them. Uh, they're the creature ones. One is the 51, and I think the other is a 55. You guys always ask what I use. That's what I use. We have a baby garter snake. Very cool eyes. So, okay, so these eyes are from fish skulls, and they do a lot of different types of eyes that you can't normally find. But that's the reason, the whole reason, that this is here. Let's move these off to the side. You guys have seen all of those. Um, this is the feather craft. It's actually for fly fishing, but I get a copy. I get a ton of magazines um, all year round. So I use the dragon eyes a lot. And then of course the living eyes. The living eyes come in four different patterns. There's an ice, there's a fire, there's an earth and a wind, and they are phenomenal, phenomenal eyes. Love using them. And this is just the, uh, the new and improved baby garter snake. It's a snake pattern print down the side, a little bit of modeling on the bait. It's kind of putting stuff in, in patterns. So this is that. And then we've got a pumpkin that real cool pumpkin seed. And a lot of folks ask if I'm adding a white primer between layerings, like if I'm doing the stencil. No, this is just one color on top of the other. The only thing that I'm doing when I stencil on different colors over top of existing colors, um, make sure that the bottom layer is very well heat set. And the last thing about colors and layering is that if I were to do blue and try to put orange on top of that, it would not look as good or stand out as much as if I do orange underneath and then put the blue in. It's just the way the world works. One of the neat things about this pattern is that it kind of jumps out. It almost looks three-dimensional just because of how this is on a foiled bait. That's the beauty of a foiled bait. And to get these kinds of effects, just the last little piece that we'll do here on this particular bait, is that you want to use a very light transparent color underneath and you want to try and fade those colors. You don't want really wild contrasts on an under layer, on your base layers. So this is all um, transparent paints. It's a transparent yellow, like a sunrise yellow, fading into the transparent orange and a little bit of iridescent red. You can see the iridescent red, which is also a color shifter up in the top, it'll almost give that pink under certain lighting conditions, which is cool because it also mimics what fish do. Um, and then the top layering for the pumpkin seed, oh, you can see a little bit of orange. I did a little bit of orange first in a couple of places, um, but you can really see the Maui blue. And this is just a regular transparent orange. And then we've got some sunset red on the throat. Not an actual red. It's like an orangish red. And then that beautiful KBS shine. There it is. Dip it and forget it. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys. Oh, nope, nope, nope. I'm lying. Here it is. This is from yesterday. Day before. It's been two days. Three days. This is the finished hand-carved Picasso clown. But there you have it. That's what we got today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Um, I've already been asked if I'm going to sell this. I'm probably not. I really love I want to throw it. I mean, I, I, wouldn't you be curious to see how it swims? I would. I am. I'm going to throw it. 
Uh, I'm not going to throw it a lot because I want to preserve it. I really like this, really like this bait. But um, Sergeant Mike Robertson, if you get the persuasion to craft more of them, um, give me a call. We'll work something out. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you all on the next one. Cheers and happy casting.